and, yeah. and some tours and stuff. I don't know how much I'd be able to do that all on my own. You know, yeah. we maybe have to look at getting some. You need some uh, merchandise promote. as well. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, we've got we've got a few T-shirts, but uh, you've got CDs. You've got CDs. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we sell CDs at gigs. I mean, yeah. that's been great actually. Um, uh, it's yeah. probably the only place where people <laughs> buy CDs I these know, days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's mostly at gigs um, that we sell them. We sell a, a few online and a few digital downloads and stuff. But yeah, physical copies just at gigs. Um, I was saying on to the we had the Lancashire Hot Pots on that yeah. I've actually bought a band CD at the gig, but I'll never play the CD. I'll just listen to it on Spotify. But I, I just want to support the band, yeah, so yeah. I'll buy the CD. I've done that as well. That, I've done that. That's yeah. I kind of like don't like those words coming out of my mouth, but that's just the way it is. Mm. I'm not. I'm not going to get a CD out of my it's car and put a CD in. I've just convenient. got my phone. I've got Spotify. I've got every band I could ever want. I'll just press play and just start driving. I've, I've just <laughs> done that exact thing. I can't I? argue with the logistics of that. I had my whole mm. iTunes library on my old phone, and uh, got rid of it. Changed over to Android, and I thought, do I import them all back on? It's all music I've bought, you know. And uh, and I thought, you know, what? I pay for Spotify. I use yeah. it. For, I use it for teaching because um, I'm generally well, not against it, but but uh, I don't sort of. I'd rather just buy it direct if I can, you know. But um, I thought, well, I'm paying for it. I, why, why clutter my phone up with all this stuff? Exactly. If I can just use that, you know, if I'm already paying for I've it. I've got you know. pretty much every band I've ever liked is a, in a long list of pl- like a place yeah. of their entire back catalogue. and just go, oh, today I'm going to listen to ACDC. <laughs> Boom. Whole back, whole back catalogue shuffle. So, conven- <laughs> so convenient, isn't it? Uh, he's, he's squirming a bit. Yeah, he doesn't no, like I can, it. I can understand. I wish it, it wasn't this way. Yeah. I'd rather, th- I'd rather, I prefer CDs. I, I prefer you know what? You know, I totally get it. it it's very easy and. Um, you know, it, it is significantly more convenient. I get that, um, and especially if you've got one of those cars that'll let you do that, then great. But I don't know. In the van, we've got CDs. We don't have a thing to play uh, a phone through it, so it's all CD really in the van on the mm-hmm. on the way to gigs. The thing, I mean, uh, Spotify is one of those really difficult things where I just don't think it's sustainable. I agree. Right, because if you're going to pay people peanuts. You get monkeys, all right. You know what I mean. You just, you know, you, you get so little back. It's gone up though, oh and it will, <laughs> and it will. No, it has, and it will continue to go up. There, oh there, that has been reported. I mean, that was that was the big concern at the beginning because you got paid fuck all at not point not two yeah. pence per play, yeah. but it's it's gone up and it will continue to go up as more. I think they've hit like a hundred million paid subscribers. Right. Yeah. So it's only going to go up. Mm. So the money's going to go up. I mean, the artist is obviously at the bottom of the pile always, which oh is yeah. which is totally fucked up. But, th- but it I will be more sustainable. I don't know that you can. Can you live off what you can earn off Spotify? I don't think e- so. Eventually, you will be able to. And what the key thing is, uh, those very influential sp- playlists. Mm. If you can get certain songs or an album featured on yeah. a playlist, it can get millions of plays, and you can get money from it. And you can, you, it is sustainable. Mm. As well as all, as a musician, you're never going to just be relying on that. So why would you well, think? Why well, would you true, yeah, yeah, true. You're yeah. always going to have your yeah. touring now is always going to be the priority. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that all this stuff is like your album sales have gone, mm. but that is going to slowly come back up in its place. Well, it's never going to completely mm. replace it, I but it is going to come back you've up. You've just got to be on it now, I think, as well. You have to be. You just have to be, you know. I always yeah. use the ACDC example. They resist, sorry, Metallica, but they resisted to be on it for the first five or six years. But then somebody explained to them, if you're not on there, the next generation, that's where they listen. So if you're not there, you're just going to you're gonna miss out. Yeah. Forget the financial side of it. The whole next generation, they're not going to hear you if you're not there. But it's a different way, though, isn't it? I mean, I... I get it. I understand it. I just, I think, you know, compared to, um, I, you know, I'm going to sound like Grandpa <laughs> Granola, right? But, you know, compared to sitting there with a gatefold sleeve, oh, yeah. reading the lyrics and looking at I the agree. artwork. I totally you know, agree. It's it's not even in the same. No. But we're, we're a dying breed. We'll yeah. be gone. Yeah. And, that, well, and th- the next generation, won't that won't exist to them. The, the, the concept of it will be alien. They'll be like, you have to actually open it. You have to touch it. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe it shouldn't die. Well, maybe it won't. I mean, vinyl's never died. No, no. well, that's that's. that's it'll, it'll still be there, but it won't be the. It'll never I be the norm. I listen to more music on vinyl than anything else at, yeah. at home, you know. Obviously, but I'm not out. I've got about, it, but I know. just don't listen to it enough. I should. But I really should. Sound is analog. What you, you know? can't yeah. beat that sound. You can't imitate there's it. No, there's nothing as good. There no. really isn't. You know, I don't care what anybody. Which says is why. Anything. Which is why it's never gone away. Yeah. 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 I can see. I can see CDs going away. When I first quite easily. When I first got back into vinyl again, I mean, listen, it was a kid growing up a lot. I'd, I was just the first time I put a, I think it was the White Album. I put it on, nice. and uh, and I was just sat there and I was just like, like immersed. I was just yeah. like, oh my mm-hmm. god, I yeah. forgot what music was meant to sound like. <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and uh, it was just such a experience. When I listen to vinyl, 
that's all I do. I sit there and I listen to it. I don't. I'm not on my phone or on yeah, the computer. Yeah, well, exactly, or exactly. It just becomes that's the sole f- activity, you know. It's and nobody does that anymore. No, no. especially not young uns these days. It's all background it's music not, now. It is. It has I become a background know. thing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe there is a whole swathe of them that are. I don't know. I mean, there'll I always be a p- percentage of people who do that, but it, the norm will just be young kids just listen to individual speakers, songs. Yeah. They don't do albums. They just do this song, that song, move on to the next. That's just the way it's going. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah. Well, I have. I've, I see it with my some of my young students who I teach. Um, a lot of them, that an album is a totally alien concept. It's to gone. Them, you know, it's gone. Like you know, it's just a, a it's song. It's painful to w- say yeah, it, yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. it is. And you get artists that just go into the studio, bang out a few songs, and put them out. Mm-hmm. They don't put out an album. They just put them out on the digital platforms. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> just becomes yeah. a disposable commodity. Well, though, it is. It? it is. That's what it's become, and it, it yeah. has because I, th- I agree. But that's I think not right, though, is it? No, it's not right. But you know. what can we do about it? You have to adapt. Fight. You, have, you have to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, it doesn't stop you doing what you do no. and how you do no, it. No, it doesn't. It no. doesn't. But you yeah, don't, don't yeah. let it bother you too much. Oh, <laughs> but no, I don't know. I just, I think, I, I kind of feel sorry for it. I, I feel sorry <laughs> for it. I him. feel sorry for for like since Napster. You know, because like, I mean, you just, you know, you you uh, whether wittingly or not, you, you're starving yourself of of something that is important. And has been for a long time, you know, and, and actually you get a richer understanding of an artist or a, a sound or, or whatever. You you know, when you immerse yourself that fully in that world, it's it's like being in a cinema. You know what I mean? It is. It's, it's, it is. That, it's a different way of, of, of consuming that media. Yeah. And it, it, it's, I think it's important. Oh, it is. I couldn't agree more. Oh, yeah. know, Unfortunately, the whole c- the whole experience of like listening to an album the way the artist r- intended, that is gradually gonna. I don't think it'll ever completely go away, but it won't certainly won't be the mainstream. No, it's all, it's going to be about individual songs. Yeah. Mind you, you say that, but didn't take that just release their album on tape. I haven't. I did it. Didn't yeah, know I think that. they did I it on a cassette. Well, I believe they did it. on a cassette. Who has a cassette player? Yeah. That you get cars now, the don't the new ones. They don't have a CD player. They've got Bluetooth yeah, yeah, and they've right. got an aux to yeah, plug in your it. cable. That's it. Mm, that's that's it. a sign of trends. Why would car, car manufacturers sack that off if it was still viable? Mm. I remember even even as a kid. Uh, I mean, I was I was only born in 1990, but even when I was at, um, well, as, as young as I can remember, when a new piece of vinyl came into the house, it was a big deal. Like yeah. we all yeah. sat and listened to it. You know, it was like yeah. a, a, an event. You know, I remember uh, at my my auntie's house. She had loads of vinyl and like listening to Michael Jackson on vinyl with headphones on. Like mm-hmm. my mum was around, and my auntie's just yakking on. And I'm just on the floor, just listening yeah. to music for yeah. like hours, just yeah. immersed in it. And how many? I, how many young people do that today? No, it, it, when you to get fair, I don't do that anymore. Like no. you were saying with that vinyl, they just yeah, listen yeah. to it. Yeah. I very well. I'm in the car. I do do a lot of driving, so. I I've do get, I do get, but at home, I think that's I've where most got, people listen anyway. There's always a lot of stuff car, going on. Yeah. You always, when do, I don't, people necessarily have as much time to just sit. That's, and that's do. the problem, isn't it? I think, I think the car is 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 probably the most. I agree. Yeah. Is probably where most people listen to music. I think so. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's sort of spread out between us who does lead and who who who's rhythm. Um, it's mainly Jackson that does rhythm. Um, and me that I'm kind of the dynamics really so you know in the choruses I tend not to do a right lot guitar wise and then I come in in, in sorry in the verses I tend not to do a lot guitar wise and then in the choruses I'll come in or that's on colour or the pre-choruses or whatever it needs you know what I mean just to kind of lift it up a bit yeah Um. do you do, you do most of the lead work then uh yeah yeah. You seem to do it live mainly. Yeah, yeah. Um I mean I'm 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 hesitant there because we have had people say, Well Jackson never plays a solo and that's just not true. Not true, folks. Not but true. predominantly it is you, but he does some. Because mm. if he comes up with something then I suppose he can play it. <laughs> we ask at the time at the time we're putting the song together, do you want to take the solo on this? If yeah. he says yes, he's got it. I don't argue. You can do what you want, Bob. Fair enough. Um if if he doesn't want to do it, I do it. So where do you think your strength is in songwriting? Uh, I don't know. That's a really interesting question. question. Um, <laughs> I, on the guitar side or on the vocal lyric sides? Um, actually, they're all one and the same to me. Do you class yourself as a, as a guitar player or a singer? Neither. I class myself as a, so- self as a songwriter. There you go. Good answer. Um, 
though I do spend a lot more time on guitar than I do on vocals. I think we all do. <laughs> <laughs> Just because... I never know. wanted to be a singer. Yeah, I mean, it's I pretty much ended up having to sing because nobody else would. Me the same. I was like, I'm never going to get... If I don't sing, I'm never going to get a band going, so yeah. I'll just have to do it. Same, <laughs> so, yeah. Same yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you have to kind of just through hours of... Doing it. Yeah, yeah you kind of... Get yourself to the point where you can hold a note. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, you know. And then, you know, you find that... Um, it gets easier, I suppose. It does, and then you can belt notes, and then you can you can change how you're singing. And I don't know yeah. about you two though, but how did you feel when, it, as opposed to play, playing guitar and singing? But then it's a total different ball game doing them both at the same time. For me, that was a game changer. Uh, yeah, yeah. I find um, I don't know about you, but I can play a gig two hours no problem just playing guitar. Yeah. But as soon as I start playing guitar and singing, I am pissing sweat. Yeah, yeah. where's your exactly right the same? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's a full body, full body mind yeah. workout. The whole, yeah, it's a much more visceral experience. It is because you know if you miss that note, you're fucked. Absolutely, <laughs> you know what I mean. Somebody's miss a note and forget a lyric. <laughs> yeah, well, you do a double fuck up. Oh, we've all done that, man. You sing. But I, al- I always felt I could be a better guitar player or a better singer if I just mm. did one. Like it was always a, I was always pushing me to my limit to do both at the same time. For me, it depends what I'm playing. If it, it does if depends yeah. what you're playing, though. If, if it's if it's a riff based thing, and if it's, especially if it's, if the riff's got nothing to do with what you're singing, yeah. that can be a bit of a mind fuck. Yeah. You know, you've got to really concentrate, or get to the point where you can play it on autopilot, yeah. and then you can just focus on the singing, or you can focus on one particular part mm. rather than as a whole. You know, th- well, that's we were, what yeah. we were getting more technical as we were going along, yeah. so it became more of a challenge to. I had to really think about the melodies that I was putting over the top of it because I used to come up with melodies on the guitar that would yeah. make vocal melodies and then put words on it fit words to that but then it got to the point where like but can i sing this melody when yeah. i'm playing yeah this? exactly yeah. yeah yeah if yeah. you've got oh. if you've got two you know uh rhythms that are at, at odds with each other from what you're playing and what you're singing that can be an absolute yep. nightmare yeah sometimes you can get away with it sometimes yeah. you can't you know what i mean i mean you you guys were doing a lot of palm muting and, and stuff anyway so i mean yours was I would say a lot more complicated than what I do. You know what I mean? Mm. It certainly had a lot more um, you would have to think about than what I do. Mm. Um, you know, I, I just do what I do. <laughs> yes. I mean, when you do it after a while, it just comes more naturally, I suppose, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, most of the time uh, I'm just trying to inject a little bit more melody or harmony or, or a different melody or a different harmony yeah. into it. Or a counterpoint to the original line. Most of the time, I don't like to do the original line as I've written it, and then Jackson takes that. Okay. You yeah, know, yeah. or if he's written the song, then he's playing what he's written. Um, most of the time, I don't like to play exactly the same thing as him unless it needs it. You know, if it's a big chunky chorus, then sometimes it needs to be two guitars to kind of beef it up, f- fill it out a yeah. bit. But. If it's a pre-chorus, or sometimes if it is a chorus, uh, you know, it doesn't need two guitars playing exactly the same thing. No, even no, definitely Even not. if one's, you know, even if on some of our songs, you know, I'll be capoed at the second, and he's not capoed at all. So you get yeah. two different voicings of the same chords. That can, that I can, can add colour to it, can't I? Yeah. But you, because you, Dean, you play in a trio. The D- yeah, the Dean yeah. Newton trio. Well, yeah. I was thinking a trio, there's less room for... I don't know, it's more raw and stripped down, so there's less room for mistakes or you can't hide behind other guitars. Yeah, like there, there's a bit of that, yeah. But in, in other ways as well, you can be more free as well. You know, so Creatively, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. so uh, but yeah, definitely. The, um, the, the mistakes almost seem amplified, yeah. You do. You mm. are very aware that, you know, if you drop out or whatever, that you're, there's a huge component of the sound that's suddenly just gone missing, you know. There's I've the seen that with a few bands where they've gone yeah. for a four-piece, mm. a guitar yeah. player's left, and they've just gone to a three-piece. Yeah. Yeah. They've had to totally change the way they play mm. and yeah. adapt yeah. the sound. Yeah. And Especially if you recorded an album as a four-piece, then your next album's a three-piece. That would be like, mm. that would be a big undertaking. That yeah, too. definitely, yeah. yeah. But how long have you been doing the, the, the trio? Newton trio? Um, that's, it's tw- about 12 months. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, well, probably born out of frustration, like a lot of things, you know. <laughs> yeah. the, the, uh, you many bands before that? Yeah, yeah, well, all sorts of other projects and stuff. There was 
there was AWOL, you know, that was, was to get AWOL, with, that was with, a name uh, I couldn't remember. With Matty and Stephen from Heartbreak Remedy, yep. I know you've had them on. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we still play now and again, but we, that's just rock covers, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just very occasional. That's just good fun, actually, now. It's just, yeah. a, we hardly play anymore, but when we get together, it's just a laugh, you know. We never practice or anything like that, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I had a band for a, quite a few years called Secure Unit. That was with um, Frank well. Hall, uh, the drummer from Necromandus, people might know, oh, yeah. know him. Yeah. Um, and uh, we had a band for a while. And that was kind of almost the band out that I wanted to be in. Um, but it was still quite cover-based. You know, we had a few original tunes. We did one CD, but nothing really came of it. And, um, and then just through sort of that and networking with guys, I met um, the bass player, Jeff. Um, he'd sort of been on cruise ships for years and years, you know, an old pro kind of guy. And um, he'd, he'd been out off well, out of the scene for a long time, he hadn't done any gigs, and it just turns out we've got a lot of shared interests, we, we, but when there's me and Jeff, and then John Marcangelo, our drummer, uh, a lot of people, well, some people might know him, he was in a band called Violinsky in the 70s, right? Um, with Mick Kaminsky from ELO, the uh, violinist mm. from ELO, yep. and they had a big hit called Clog Dance, <laughs> and it was on the <laughs> top of the pops and all that, you know, John wrote that tune, um, so he's, he's a multi-instrumentalist, but... Uh, yeah, it just turned out that the three of us have got a lot of shared influences. We're we're all sort of um, really into jazz and stuff like that. So um, when we sort of decided to put a, a trio together, it was originally just going to be a project to just get and jam out the tunes that we couldn't get away with playing live. You know, that, or, or, <laughs> that, or, that, or that no nowhere would would um, allow you w- to play. want us to play them. Yeah. yeah, and then it just started out like that, and then we thought, well, you know, we want to get out gigging. Um, and I had a few songs I'd written, and then it just sort of snowballed from there. I just uh, quickly banged, well, not banged out, but I quickly sort of got together about 11 songs. So we uh, we recorded them. And from that, you know, we've we've done all right. I mean, we, like I say, we've only been together 12 months, but we've done a bit of traveling so far. I mean, only in the UK. We haven't gone fur- any further afield yet. But uh, we're getting around, and uh, we've got quite a lot booked in for this year. So, I mean, yeah. hopefully, if the trajectory we're on continues, anything, anything to go by, yeah. it's lo- it looks good, you know, but... Uh, you know, you just take it one gig at a time, really. So you sing and play guitar in that? Yeah, band? I do, yeah. So it's yeah. you playing guitar, a bass player, bass and, drummer. and drums. It's pretty standard power trio format, really, yeah. Um, so yeah. how did you come up with the name? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it's dead inventive, isn't it? Yeah, well, actually, I mean, the, the um, probably, it probably sounds very sort of uh, egotistical, but it, I, I always want, well, not always wanted, but I needed some, well, I felt like I needed something that had my name attached to it in mm. some way, you know, and I didn't just want to go out as Dean Newton because I see a lot of people do that and, Sometimes, a lot of the time, they have a scratch band who's just been sort of like drove yeah. either come into the depths or whatever. You know, they aren't a, an actual band. But sometimes the band doesn't get any credit. None at all. If it's that's a trio, people I mean, know yeah. it's a trio. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, yeah, that, that's the thing. And I, I wanted it to be, it's definitely more of a democracy rather than a dictatorship, a bit like, like you guys. You know, I mean, you know, you, you're, you have an equal say, and I try and keep yeah, it that absolutely. way. You know, even though, even though, you know, I do pretty much everything. You know, yeah, I, yeah. everything from book the gigs, write the songs, drive the van, you know, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. the, the lot, you know. But uh, but even still, that I'm quite happy to do that because obviously I'm aware it's it's got my name on it, you know. So um, that and and the sort of the privilege to play with them, other two guys, you know, they're both old yeah. pros, both incredible musicians. So I kind of feel like that's my duty to do that, if, <laughs> if you know what I mean, right? You know, and because they're, they're not really they're not making a lot of money out of it, you know. So yeah. Um, I wouldn't say they're doing a favour to me, but because they, th- I, th- I think they enjoy it anyway. Well, they but must <laughs> do. But yeah, yeah. I looked at some of the videos, and you can tell. Oh, the, oh the, yeah, no, they, they do. They love it. Yeah. They I saw they're quite happy to give you your moment. Oh, the full on. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I was yeah, saying yeah. to Tech before. There's yeah. a video where I, can't, I just I just googled it, put it in YouTube, and just, there's a video came up. You playing somewhere, and you're going for it. Yeah. The bass player is just there, kind of going. <laughs> yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. like just let him do his thing. Let the boy play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're great like that. Yeah, they give me free reign. Um, and obviously that was, that was, was that far back, yeah. 30, 35 mil then as well, so it were, was, were yeah. film reels. Before HD? Yeah, yeah. before all the digital takeover. When did that uh, actually happen? That was 2012. Because mm. um, the cinema was a bit behind everything else, I thought. We were, we were a little bit late, although in terms of Cumbria we weren't, um, we, were, we were quite, because um, we, there's so many independent cinemas in Cumbria as That's well. True. Which is one That's in, true, yeah. In, in terms of that density with independent cinemas, it's quite rare around the country. Mm. Um, but yeah, we took it May 2012. Um, so 
and I'd, I'd learnt projection. Did you learn any projection around then? I, I, enough that I was uh, shit at it. So before that, it was all the reels? And it all was the... all reels, yeah. Right. And it was... It, I mean, well, I, so you'll say it wasn't hard at all, whereas because I was rubbish at it, I think it was one of the <laughs> hardest things I've ever it, tried I've, to I've, learn. Whenever I've seen someone doing it, it looks more complicated than it appears, I think. I have rubbish fingers, so I'm trying, <laughs> trying to feed this thing It almost through. reminds me of like cassette tapes back in the day, you know, they all, they all chop That's up exactly and like, oh, for fuck's sake. sake. <laughs> yeah, but at least you could fix that with a pencil in the, yeah, the middle true, of the yeah. thing. But this was... I set fire to some film. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't my best moment. So they they just send you a reel, and you only had that one reel. And if you messed it up, you messed it up. Yeah, that was that was it. You'd kind of you. So you get a big box, and it would be the reels would be about two miles of film, on average, or maybe Hell. maybe just slightly less. Um, and they'd come in smaller reels, and then you literally just sellotape them together. Um, Why did they not come already ready to go? Oh, because they're so big. They, they're oh, right, so they have to break huge. them up into parts. Yeah, so they're in parts, so they come together, <laughs> and then you get the adverts separately and everything like that. And but the, um, the trailers as well. It was it was the, it's on knitting, wasn't it? Yeah. Did it ever get to a point where you thought this? We shouldn't be doing this still these days. <laughs> Maybe. I, I mean, I, it's, I it's, like, it's an art, and I like the idea of it, but mm. it's not very practical, is it? I feel like at, close to the end when we were leaving, it was like, yeah, oh, we can't wait for the efficiency of digital. Oh, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Oh, we can just press play. It's, it's a remote. Now I kind of miss it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I mean, there's something there's something about that physical actually, which which again you say like with things and it being quite difficult, mm-hmm. but it just becomes part of. It's the same with anything with driving with biking. It's um, mm. you, it, it's something physical that then you can just do, and it's just natural to you. Um, but you're also you come away with like dirty hands from the film yeah, and yeah. that you've touched it's and, you know it, it's, it? and it's traveled and i mean we showed top gun we always say this but wait, we showed yeah, we top did, gun yeah. print that was just and it was an original print um but it was just a mess Shot and like bits. bits missing and scratches all but, over but it, but it was great yeah. it was absolutely so if you brilliant. kept a lot of the original reels on it you had we oh, well we don't know because you, you would send them away so that was that was actually part of the oh, transition so you had, once you'd finished playing it you had to send it back mm-hmm. yeah ah, yeah okay right so Whereas now it's all just hard drives. You stick it into a system. Yeah. You send that away again. Um, back then it was it was very much the case. You're looking after this thing mm. um, <laughs> that has a certain history. Treat sometimes this baby it, with care. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it would come and you'd be you know, like, who who has touched this? Uh, and then <laughs> then our chief projectionist, our old projectionist Tony, would do whatever he was going to do to the film. And but he, I, I feel like he always took care. He had horrible hands before he started. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Tony was out of a job then. Oh, uh, not immediately, because he, he, as well as that, liked to do handyman jobs around the cinema. Oh, okay. But, right. I mean, handyman... For a lot of people, that would have been the case, I would imagine. Yeah, but, I mean, he held the place together with blue tack and sellotape <laughs> and did... Chewing gum in the light film. As oh, any independent yeah. cinema should be. Just bosh jobs, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, um, it took a bit of changing, didn't it? But he, he, I think he wanted to go by the end. He, he was very f- much... He did not he like old? digital. Yeah. yeah. Ah, right, okay. He, he didn't like digital. He was like, well, it's, this isn't cinema anymore, and he just sort of <laughs> would stomp about. But so in 2012, is it, is it the same setup as now as it was then? Have you any more Yes, changes? I mean, we have had additions. So obviously, we, we opened screen number three. Um, that was 2015. Mm-hmm. No, 2016. Right. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, right. it started. The process started in 2015, but it was 2016. So when he did it in 2012, was that just to play able to play HD? Or was that because oh, I wasn't 4K then? That was so it wasn't 4K. I mean, in terms of in terms of that, that that can just change with updates and things. I mean, oh, okay. you, you right. can bring in new technology as well. But, um, but so yeah, they're sending that, you 4Ks these days for films. We're, so we're not necessarily we're, we're, our projectors are 2K. Um, right. But you can get prints that are, you can get files that are um, up to quality. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. But it it just depends, and also we do every so often. It doesn't happen as much now. We used to do in the past with with film, but you get projectionist notes where it says like, "Oh yeah, hey, you've got like Dunkirk when we showed Dunkirk mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan film that had projectionist notes because you've got to show it in a certain frame." Or um, that was a nightmare. Yeah, it was. Nobody, it was, nobody you know, liked that. It's it's good though to be able to do that and to actually mm. show it how it's supposed to be shown. Um, yeah. Whereas if you're just going to watch it on a TV at home, you're not necessarily going to get that. Yeah. You might get the black yeah. space, or it might just fill the screen. Do you um, remember Les Miserables had um, uh, sound instructions as well? They were like, you have to play this louder than ordinarily you would play it, <laughs> and they were like, I was like, fine, but you don't know our pensioner audience, and, <laughs> and sure enough, complaints. Yeah. yeah. Suppose sometimes because you get. Really loud parts, but then you also get really quiet parts in it as well. Not in Les Mis. They no. are all banging it out, especially <laughs> Russell Crowe. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Russell. But, but 
Sorry. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it, like, again, that, that transition in 2012 was very much an efficiency change. And it was for, for mm. all cinemas. Yeah. Mm. Because these films that you that would come, they're huge, and the amount it would cost for them to ship them out, mm. as opposed to a hard drive or sending yeah. it over a network. Um, yeah. So the big, the big change in that, really, which a lot of independent cinemas were kind of pushed into, was the fact that, yeah, you will have to change to digital. Um, but what we'll do is we will, we will, almost loan you projectors, and then after a while they will become yours. So this is this is another big kind of, not necessarily problem, but obstacle that we've had, um, because there was. I mean, without getting too far into it, there's something called a VPN, um, which was the, oh sorry, VPF, which is a visual visual print fee, which meant that en- any film that was sent out to us the distributor would also have to pay a fee towards. Um, and it, I mean, it all leads into the reason why it, why it changed over, but it also means that we can't show some films that we'd love to show because if it's from a smaller studio or from a smaller distributor, they might not want to pay that fee. So as much as we ah, are right. in Cumbria... you have to pay that fee for every per- place it got sent out the, to. The, yeah. yeah. Ah, that, would, that would mount up, wouldn't it? Yeah, but um, that, that's, one of the, that's one of the benefits of Screen 3 because um, that, that doesn't apply in Screen 3. It's right. completely ours. However, so, uh, okay. it will only see thirty-one, yeah, thirty-one people. So you know, it it by mm. its nature struggles to so is to that pull the money more back. You guys get to choose what goes on in that one, then. Well, well, pretty much. W- once again, us guys in regards to the to the cinema, but but the the person higher yeah. than us. So it's all in you can make suggestions. Yo yo, and we <laughs> and we do, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and we, you know, we we get some suggestions on the go. We we pushed for. Uh, it's always good around Halloween because um, when we pushed for you talk classic stuff as well. well we pushed you? for The Shining, the American director's cut, and we That's got we out. got that and it sold out. We pushed for Nightmare on Elm Street, that did okay, uh, but not as good as The Shining. Mm. Then we got the original Halloween, and as well as that, we got the John Carpenter's The Fog and Escape from New York as well around the same time. In fact, it, John Carpenter owned our cinema in the. In, in, oh, yeah. in <laughs> the last Halloween, because obviously the new Halloween came out as well. Oh, so. oh, of course. October was John Carpenter, wasn't it? We yeah, because we went to see him well, live so. performing oh, right, his music. Right. So we were, yeah, for us, it was just a very John Carpenter <laughs> steady month. So do you think attendance has have been affected at all by like the internet and file shit? Not obviously not like the music industry, but do you think, with, especially with people having like 4K TVs with sound bars at home and Blu rays? Again, do I you mean, think? I mean, you can't replace the experience of going to cinema, but it's getting pretty good at home. A lot of pe- <laughs> a lot of people don't like the experience of the cinema in in the way we do anyway. Mm. Yeah, there's uh, and 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 it's I don't blame them because a lot of cinemas aren't geared up to to give you that experience. Mm. But whereas yeah. that's that's what we want to do. We have regulars mm. who come out of the screen and know that if it's not busy when they come down, they can expect a flat out conversation about <laughs> what they've just watched and what right. they might like to watch in the future. Right. And and it's not just the very film centric people. A lot of the time like the pensioners on an afternoon want to come down and discuss what they've seen. Mm. Now they'd not get that in and I won't name an, an, another cinema. But um, I know what you mean. I know but what you they, mean. But you, well, you just, wouldn't you get just that. sort of get ushered out. It's yeah. just off you go, bye. And that's it. Whereas we we try we try to put this friendly face on it. Mm. And and sometimes an argumentative face because people <laughs> want to be challenged. Yeah. Um but you know they, they see we're passionate. And 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 we see that they're passionate and they want to talk about these films because maybe they're going home to a family that do not want to. Well, that's it. Yeah, listen the to one what person in the family who loves yeah, the cinema. Exactly. So we try and give people that experience. Well, I'm in a similar position. I've been with my missus twelve years. We've never been to the cinema together. She just doesn't do the cinema. Right. Yeah, I've been to the cinema more with her friends and my friends <laughs> than I have with her. <laughs> so right. it's just just like. Because I, I've met other people like this, where it's like, if they were going to go to the cinema and they need a big button, where it's like, pause the whole film, mm. I'm just going to go to the toilet. Or So if he, does he come back at the end? Or do oh, I ask him yeah, before? I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. It's I, like, I'm I mean, watching the, director, the same film. The director film. hasn't sent me a synopsis. I, 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 haven't seen, <laughs> I haven't seen this either. I don't know. But sometimes that's the best thing about just being in a dark room where you can't talk. Because well, yeah. Just and some to. people you have to explain, like, you're meant to not know what's going on. At some point it will be explained. Yeah. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like... I need, to, I need to know now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, but, but I think we. I mean, what we always say to staff as well. It's 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 perfectly fine to be honest with customers mm. about your views of the film because it's an opinion. Yeah, because then mm. it, it's only genuine then, and and people want that genuine conversation. If you don't like a film, but they're coming in really excited about it, I mean, you can be tactful. You can be. Mm. You don't have to be like, oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Um, 
but at the same time you can be like well it's not necessarily my mm. my I, I didn't get this from it but you might, you might i got yeah. a friend who doesn't watch trailers at all like he obviously it might have to like say a franchise like star wars you mm-hmm. like star wars we always go and see when it comes out but he doesn't watch any of the trailers he just goes and watches it because he wants to just experience i don't want to have yeah. any preconceived notions no, about that, it that's me if i don't like it i want to not like it because i don't like it not because someone else doesn't like it yeah i i, I stopped watching trailers two years ago wow. um and well done. the first year the first the first experiment was black panther right. um i was like i was like there's no point because firstly, Black, the Black Panther character was in Civil War. That's his trailer. And secondly, all the Marvel films building up to every every Marvel film before is the trailer for the next, as far as <laughs> True, I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I don't mean that as a negative. It's no, just, it's the, just way the way it's it is, structured. Yeah. So I don't need those trailers. I'll only watch a trailer if it's something I know nothing about mm. and need to get some kind of grip on it. Yeah, I'm the same. And, and if there's like three or four trailers where you know, like they reveal a bit more in each trailer, yeah, yeah. I'll only watch the first exactly, one. Exactly, yeah. Like roughly a little bit about it and then okay i don't <laughs> need a star wars trailer i'm going to that film regardless yeah you kind of know what you're gonna get with star wars you're yeah like, i mean you might like it you might not but you, you know what you know what it's gonna be about <laughs> yeah and the thing with black panther was at the end of it um i mean i i for the record i'm not that keen on black panther i've not seen it but so. everything everything i liked in it as the visuals i was saying to matt oh i like that bit where this happened and this bit there bit, bit. and matt was saying yeah that was in the trailer that was in the trailer that was in the trailer and i was like <laughs> I was like, right, so I loved all the trailer moments that would have been spoiled for me if I'd exactly, watched that. And yeah. then after that, I was like, yep, no more trailers. I, I find it difficult because I'm I, not trailer addict, but I will watch. <laughs> you just, are, you yeah, are a trailer I addict. I, I, can't, I can't do what you have done. <laughs> I, I also feed, I feel like it feeds into the job anyway a little bit because I've kind of got to. It's like a, well, it's not, I think a little, for, as a partnership, I use that as, I use that as an excuse. As a partnership, it's as like long as second. one of you watches it, I think that well, works. Yeah. Well, it's worse, <laughs> it's worse for me because my, my job in the cinema is is I, I put the films together and I put the trailers on the front and the mm. adverts and stuff. So part of my job is putting these trailers in front of people, <laughs> but I won't watch them. Right. Now, sometimes I have to put, like there might be one film that'll have, I, I don't know, for the sake of argument, it has four trailers. And the film might be a 15. And I'll, and I'll say, right, one of these trailers will be a 12A trailer, and one of them will be the harder 15 trailer. But I don't want to watch any of these trailers, so sometimes I have to send another member of staff in <laughs> and, go, and go, right, I've done a build that's just the four trailers. Can you tell me which one can fit on the front of Stan and Ollie? Go for it. Because uh, I just found a way around it. I have, yeah, a, a really, a really <laughs> sneaky way. Stan and Ollie, yeah. Is that coming out is that out it's, that, it's almost it's on out. the way out now yeah. it's in fact yeah we've we've lost it now we've got rid it's of it it's gone yeah. yeah but there's so Been much gone. so much at the minute and again it's that oscar season time when you just get true flooded yeah. with everything mm. and people want to see everything because they want to be they want to have their opinion on the film yeah um it, it's strange it's always strange around that time that award season yeah. time of year when so much opinion then comes forward mm. which you don't necessarily get in the rest of the year yeah um and, it, and that's good. Like we feed off that quite well, but then it is just—it's a different audience from the rest of the year. Um, it's when it, it goes to shit when a film wins, and that film had been out a long time before the Oscars, mm. and then they come in, and and Argo, Argo is the best example. The Ben Affleck directed yeah. film, Argo. So that came. We had it for a week. Nobody came to see it. It must have had twenty people all week. Right. Rubbish. Then it won the award. People were coming in. When are you getting Argo? So <laughs> you Four shouldn't. F- yeah, fucking last year, you lazy <laughs> bastards. Come on, <laughs> fuck off. No, that, that's. I can't. I can't. Be- and it happens. Right. Hugo was another one. That that Scar- mm. Scorsese kids film. That was another one. We had to get it back because <laughs> because like, well, you should have come and supported it when yeah. y- it could have just been a good film well, rather than an you Oscar get that film. in most things. People are led by what they see in the ma- in the mainstream Ooh. media. Yeah. Yeah, I just, mean, it, it applies to all art. All, I mean, it, it music as well, music, particularly. Yeah, don't like, get me started. Sometimes, <laughs> I, f- I feel like this is something in terms of music um, compared to film where maybe it is that thing where it feels a bit more special when people, when not everyone knows about it. But you mm. do want to tell people, you want mm. to share it's like, it. It's like when you've got a favourite band who's just on the way up, but nobody yeah. really knows about it, but you know they're awesome and they're going to be big. And then as soon as they do get that audience, they are bigger and then they're at bigger venues mm. and it's not as special. It doesn't yeah, feel true. as, that's it's true. not yours as much. Yeah, um, you can't keep it in your back pocket anymore. <laughs> yeah, which, I'm, I mean, and, and, and like you say before about Netflix and things, I think Spotify and mm. on the other side, so Netflix possibly has had some bad effect on film i, I still have and amazon feel, as well with all and them. amazon all, mm. all of the streaming services i think 
Yeah, possibly it is negative. Also, it's still access to film, so people keeping people interested True. is good. True. The because non- they they produce stuff that goes straight to their service and does cinema. Yeah, in fact, a lady was in the other day asking um, when we're going to get Roma, and I was like, well, we're, we're not. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. That's quite a sidestepping the cinema straight to your customers. Because yeah. um, they have a deal with... Is it, I keep asking Curzon. Curzon, 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 isn't it? So, so these films get very limited shows in the Curzon cinemas, but that's like, that's London. Mm. It's like, oh, I can't... It, it doesn't help us up here. And I was I was watching I watched the Corn Brothers new one that's um, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs that's on Netflix and as uh, as much as I wasn't that keen on it it's gorgeous mm. it is a gorgeous looking film that on a big screen it's made for the big screen yeah. it's, it's shot like a proper old school John Ford western and it's gorgeous but that's just on my TV at home and God mm. forbid anyone watches it on the mobile because so they would, will would you be able to approach like Amazon or someone say this, you have this film, it's been out for six months, or would we be able to show it at I mean, our cinema? I, I feel like, at the, with us being an independent cinema, it would be much harder. Um, mm-hmm. If, if again, with Curzon Cinemas, which are, they, they have traits of independent, um, but very London-based, um, they have obviously struck a deal with Netflix, which is probably working well for them. I mean, it's that thing, there will be an older audience that won't necessarily want Netflix mm. at home, or, or just an audience anywhere, that then can go and see it. But they're actually lucky in the fact that they can see it on a big screen. That's true. Um, there's something so just easy about Netflix and things like that, where it, and, and you've got all the choice there, whereas actually to have that curation, to have something mm. that's put in front of you, um, some... The first one that I ever... First proper film I ever really remember seeing. Yeah. Mm. That I, I actually I l- remember. I love it. I, I, will, I watch Batman Returns every Christmas yeah, because that's it good. is an unofficial Christmas movie. Yeah, like Die Hard. Yeah, no, yeah, that's oh, not yeah. unofficial. That's a fact. Well, this is a huge I, I, debate. I, I, I get It's get set passionate. at Christmas. It's yes. filmed around Christmas time, therefore, uh, to me, that's Christmas. It doesn't have to be about Christmas to be a Christmas film. No. But it is about Christmas. He's going to the Christmas party that's to true. win back his missus, who's called Holly. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need. <laughs> like, my, one of my, well, probably my favourite film of all time, which will be nobody else's favourite film, is Enemy of the State with Will Smith. Oh, go on then, yeah. I love that, that film. That, is that was the film. first film I ever watched on DVD. Oh, Okay. Which was always, that came out in 99. Yeah, because that. I went to the cinema, and then it came out on DVD, and I. That and it. Ronan. The, oh, yeah. They, they mm. were like the first DVDs. But that was another one where the, when you got the DVD and it had all the extended yep. th- extended cut and deleted scenes, but they'd put them in so you could watch it. Yep. You, never, you know, it's something that you have to watch them separately all in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this actually put them back in the film and I was like, oh, it had loads more Jack Black in it. Yeah. <laughs> loads of Jack Black scenes. And I was like, they should have just kept that shit. It's, it's funny. It's funny Why is Jack Black be- so relevant? Yeah, 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 because <laughs> cause I was saying, because um, he's in Waterworld. And right, the extended yeah. cut has more Jack Black yeah, in it. Yeah, he's brilliant. <laughs> and he's Lots got... of it, you can tell a lot of off-the-cuff stuff, because like yeah. you know, it's what he's like, um, which is brilliant. Th- it's funny you should say that about, about Enemy of the State, because um, that was the first DVD I watched, because me and my friend, my friend had got a computer that could play yeah, DVDs. Yeah, I watched it on a computer, that yeah. was it. Yeah. And, it and, I, and we were like, the oh my God, oh my God, what can the, we get? The, the, the black bits at the top oh, of the Oh yeah, box. the letterboxes, so yeah. The screen, yeah. And I was yeah. Like, but I didn't even... I didn't even notice. I was just like, because I wasn't planning on watching it. Like, I'll just watch the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Fast forward to like, it nearly two hours later. Like, that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, we, we were just like, we've got to go out and get something. What can we go get? Oh, what's, what's this Will Smith film? Let's get it. Yeah, so I, that, I just love that film. And it's set at Christmas as well. So. <laughs> oh, it's another Christmas so, film. Yeah. Do you know it's a sequel? Is it? Yes. I did, did not you know, know that's a sequel. No, I don't know. Is it, uh, well, right, okay. <laughs> I might be mad here and I'm wrong, but isn't it a sequel to The Conversation? I've not heard oh, of the conversation. I don't. I, I. It's it's um it's a Francis Ford Coppola film with Gene Hackman, and right. Gene Hackman in Enemy of the State is the same character. Oh, right, okay. It's from seventy one, I think. That. I'm, I'm going to look that up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Yeah. It, it's. It, I mean, it'll be an unofficial sequel, but right. but he, but but Gene Hackman's character is uh, is, is meant to be the same one. Brill is a character. I think he plays on that. That's <clears throat> his nickname, anyway. Right. But I, I, I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where people regularly try and find connections. Like, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, they they say uh, they say that the Kurt Russell film Soldier from the '90s yep. is an unofficial sequel to Blade Runner. Oh, right. It's set in the same world, mm. right? Uh, apparently, and and the only real connection is the dump planet that Kurt Russell ends up on. There's one of the police cars in the wreckage there from Blade Runner, right? But they also say the timelines all link up as well. So mm. I, I, 
Yeah, I, I, I like those things. I like it when they try and link it all together. See, it's strange when you've got that. Now we've got the MCU and it's so big and so connected. Mm. And it's what just so, uh, so MCU, so like the, the Marvel, Marvel oh, Cinematic, cinematic universe. Universe. Sorry, yeah. universe. And that's so kind of, that's there. Like it's all, we all know it's connected, but it's interesting when you get films, like when I first heard that Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs had that connection because yes. mm. is it Michael Madsen and... And John, John Travolta, Travolta are yeah. brothers. Yes. Um, but somehow they're connected. Like, yeah, they are brothers. Yeah, um, there was supposed to be a film. Uh, they were supposed to make a film where it was the two of them. Mm. But, but I think Tarantino felt that was not really viable. Yeah. Probably for yeah. the best, really. The other thing that Enemy of the State first film made me aware of was the music, the score of a film, because it was Jerry Bruckheimer. Yes. Enemy of the State. Yeah. The, he's got that signature. I mean, do you mean do you, Jerry Bruckheimer as a producer? Oh, is it? Do you mean, is it Zimmer? Hans, is it Hans Zimmer? Oh, is it Hans Zimmer? Is that what it is? Hans Jerry Brockheimer he, produces... No, what, what, um, what, his, his films, what I mean is, his films always have the similar sort I of suppose, trademark. Yeah, he, yeah. Unless he uses him for all of his films. He maybe did. Because it was definitely that kind of music. I've heard that in other films. And mm. it's, you can tell it's written by the same person, but it's very atmospheric and it, it just works. Yeah. yeah. It's when, you, when you, it's so good that when you first watch it, you don't really notice it's there. Yeah. But it carries the, it helps you through that film. And afterwards, that's when you sort of, oh, that music's amazing. It works so well. And you, that's, that's. You've made me want to rewatch that film. Oh, I love it. You've re- Absolutely. You've love it. it was my... ahead of its time. It was ahead of its time. Yeah. 99. All the stuff that they talk about it is it's, stuff that's actually now, happened. Yeah. Mm. Like him, him living off the grid in a, mm. in a fucking jar or whatever he calls it. <laughs> that famous line, and he goes, You blew up the building. Why? Because you made a phone call. It's, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> He did just stuff like that. He just like, I love that film. Yeah, it's, it is good. I I love Gene Hackman. I'm I yeah. I, I was so upset when he retired, and yeah. he has not come out of retirement. He just writes um, western novels. Yeah, it's like well, see. fine if you're happy with that. And I Gene. thought Will Will Smith was really good in that. Like he, he played a clueless lawyer to perfection in that. He didn't yeah. know, he didn't know what the hell was going on. It, that, that was one point when he goes, "You're incre- either incredibly smart or incredibly stupid." And <laughs> it's just like. Walking a fine line there. It's before Will Smith had too much power as well, and then started right. to do these really boring films. Because it was, bef- oh no, it was after Men in Black, I think. It was, yeah. Men in Black was ninety eight, the first one, I think. But I think by by the time you get into the noughties, he had too much control mm. over the productions he was in, and right. just, I just don't think any of them are terribly exciting. I can't mm. think of anything interesting that he's been in the past five. Yeah, like all those ten ones. Years. What was the one with his kid? Oh, I mean, there was After, after Earth, Earth, but there was the, the, all, the, the pursuit, pursuit of, happiness. of happiness as well. Yeah, so that was. Him with his kid twice. Yeah, nobody cares Men, about Men his kid. Men in Black is alright, but not, not, not the third one. The third one was pants. Mm. I thought I didn't mind Men in Black. Yeah, I know, but that was, but that's that's early nineties as well. Mm. So he's still just like, you know, bankable star playing the game. Yeah, and then and then then just all goes boring. What do you think of Dwayne Johnson then? Oh, I role? love him. I, I think, have. All I think the he's time got better as he's gone on. I, uh, I, I mean, he's, I, he, he looks like someone who works at his craft. He, he wants to do it right. Like, I, I think he is getting better, but I think he started well. Like that film, Welcome to the Jungle, yeah, is that. hilarious. I, I love that. And Walking Tall is Walking one of my Tall. favorite I films. I love that film. Yeah, just I love that. Dwayne the Rock Johnson with a two by four, <laughs> making sure that little town has justice. Taking care of shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's Penrith. Though, that town is Penrith. It's cause such a simple small town story kind of thing. There's not a lot to it, but it's great. It's a gripping yeah. film. It's I a thought. true story as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. is yeah. It? Yeah, yeah, just a guy came back and, and decided his town had gone to shit. To shit. <laughs> yeah, and yeah the two casino, by four. casino had ruined it all, the money and the drugs yeah. and the gambling and all that. So he just went around and hit people with a Yeah, he sort it out. Wood. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love that film. It's I, brilliant. Get your, get your taillight fixed. What's wrong with my oh. taillight? <laughs> yes. This is yeah. broken. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, when you think about it now, I mean, yeah, obviously, Arn, uh, like Arnie, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. was, was that star. Now mm. The Rock is that star. Kind I mean, of, yeah. Uh, in, well, in, well, in, in a different way. In Welcome in, to the Jungle, when The Rock is entering the club, Arnie is leaving yeah, the club I saw and he that. says, it's have like fun. A, it's like a changing of the guard yeah. kind of thing. Uh, yeah, remember and it's, that, yeah? And it's, have fun. it's right as well. It's like, yeah, that he's... <laughs> has kind of happened, yeah. He is the true successor. But he's... he's I don't want to shit on Arnie because I love him. Mm. But, but The Rock he's is had his a, moments. But he was a better, he's a better actor than Arnie. Because yeah. Arnie was a personality rather than an actor. Hmm. Well, yeah, the Terminator doesn't really take a lot of acting skills. You just got to act like a robot. Yeah, kind of thing. It's it's a different. Has there been any roles that like? What's Arnie's most sort of? There was a thing where he's. It was more recently where his daughter is becoming a zombie, mm. and it's about him dealing with the threat of of the fact she is turning, and right. that's a real sort of. This is Arnie acting, and he's good. Yeah, but nobody cared because it's oh, not. It's not I what just thought, wants. I am Legend. 
What do you think of that one? Will Smith. Oh, oh the Will Smith. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's. I, I, I like that. I quite like that. I, I, it's sad when the dog dies. That was very sad. <laughs> yeah. Very sad. I, I, like, I like all the stuff when he's on his own. Yeah. Um, and, and then I don't. I don't like that the the wave of zombie creatures are just CGI. Mm. It's like, can yeah. you not have just put some makeup on a bunch of extras and got them to it's run true. at you? Yeah. When you've got that story, I think we talked about this before, though, because mm. obviously you've got the Vincent Price... Um, oh, Last Man on Earth. Last Man on Earth, which is based on the same oh, novel. And then there's... Omega, it, Omega, Man, Omega, Omega Man. Omega Man is the one for Charles, me. Charlton right. Heston. But right. I, I like the Charlton Vincent Heston Price. with a gun, that's, <laughs> that's life. But, I mean, that's just... From his, General from his cold, his dead hands. hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what I was going to say was why I mentioned, why I was going to mention Enemy of the State in the first place was because that was the film where I struggled to go back to VHS. Right. Because it was like yeah. late late 90s yeah, when yeah. The, well, DVDs were coming in, coming in. Mm-hmm. And then I went to watch something on VHS and I was like, really? Oh, no, it was on a, I think it was hooked up to a PC monitor or something. I can't remember. It was a good, good screen. Yeah. But going from DVD to that, I was like, I don't think I can go back to this anymore. Plus the sound on it as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. VHS was just awful. That was such a big <laughs> jump, though, I think. It's VHS, huge, isn't it? Because obviously you've got DVD to Blu-ray now, and now there's like 4K Blu-ray and things like that. But they're maybe less of a jump. However, I do remember I do remember Darren, who used to work at the, the cinema, being like, why are, you, why are you watching Blu-rays? Why are you getting Blu-rays? It can't be that different from, from DVD. It can. Yeah, mm. it can. Especially, <laughs> and again, especially sound. Sound is a big Yeah, it sounds huge. Thing. The audio change. Um, I, I was like that, but but Darren and I were obviously like we, we we were besties at one point, so so we had the same opinions on a lot of that stuff. Well, a lot of people, a lot of times, you get attached to something, you don't like change. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. I mean, but until you experience it, you go, I have to admit, that's a lot better. <laughs> yeah, it's a big yeah. plus that it can still the Blu-ray player can still play my DVDs. Yeah, and that, it, that, it can upscale them as well. Yeah, yeah, so that saves it. Um, and you know, I watch a lot of sit- old sitcoms where, you yeah. know, no Blu-ray is going to make them look any better because they were shot like shit in the day. And anyway. they were shot in, uh, is it, not, not Letterboxd, um, 4x3, four four three. Three. yeah. <laughs> four three, that, yeah. That's something I love about Blu-ray. If a film was shot in 4x3, um, the the Blu-ray doesn't change that. So it yeah. keeps it in 4x3. Because they're maintaining it. the quality. Everyone gets it's like stretched yeah. Yeah. sideways. So I love yeah. that. I've got, um, I've got the Blu-ray of Dumbo, of all things, and it's um, <laughs> and it's in 4x3. You and must it, have kids. Um, <laughs> Well, I this do, was before. but yeah, but I, I, I have always loved kids cinema, regardless, because yeah. um, because I grew up in the eighties when kids cinema had loads of swearing and stuff, Same. so it was just yeah. awesome. So, but as a result, I just I never grew out of all the kids stuff yeah. that I watch, and Someone now I've good. got kids, and I mean. One one kid is on the way. Come April, do you keep trying to show two. them older stuff that you like? Yeah, but, the, but she, me, my daughter's not two yet. So oh, okay, it's a not quite ready for that moment. yet. I got her in for a short time. I got her into classic Doctor Who, and, and that's <laughs> right. be, that's because the opening title sequences look like baby sensory, so it just right. worked. <laughs> and she watched Adam West Batman for a little while because oh, that's wow. colourful that's and wonderful. Yeah, 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 we would we'd sit we'd sit on the floor and watch Adam West Batman because I spent a lot of money on a blu-ray box set of all the adam west Batman. oh my god <laughs> so i um i was like we're watching these i feel like she's watched quite a lot of trash as well well there was Just that like time inadvertently yeah there's there's um i tried to with i tried to with some anime like some of the studio ghibli stuff yeah. and she watched some things and others she hasn't got the attention mm. span for it those original batman back in the day who's the guy who played robin or burt ward I struggle to believe that even back then they looked in the mirror at those outfits and went, "Damn, we look good." Well, yeah, <laughs> I just can't. It's but, just, Adam but it was, oh my it, God. but it was the whole thing. The whole thing was that Adam West Batman was all designed to take the piss anyway. Yeah. like it was never intended to be serious. I mean, from a kid's point of view, it's like, yeah, it's Batman and Robin, so it's great. But yeah. it's also that thing of so parents can go, "Oh, was that a dick joke? That was a dick joke. <laughs> oh my God, this is great." But it wasn't even like the the actual Batman and Robin film that they had. It was like how trying to make Robin look a bit good yeah he's always had that shit sidekick kind of stigma <sighs> attached to him it's like that, yeah that the titans oh. thing that they've it's, done it's, oh, the titans, first start, yeah. it's the name robin i mean robin. <laughs> what can you do with it it's hard to work you work, you've not yeah. got much to work with well they've done netflix has just done a series a live action series of the teen titans which is um right. robin leading a group and he is proper badass in that series right. it, it's it's not amazing but it's it does. It services a nice job, mm. and it's full of sex and violence, and it's just it, his grown-up superhero stuff. It was sold as as 
Robin saying "fuck Batman." Yeah, that he's was like the someone's main... like oh, right, he, okay. he attacks a bunch of of low level criminals in the in an alleyway, beats and they're all sort of looking at him and laughing, and, and they're all looking up around looking for Batman, and then one of them stops and goes, "Wait, w- where is Batman?" And Robin just camera pulls in him and he just goes fuck Batman and he <laughs> right, yeah. beats the living shit out of these criminals <laughs> and, and he's good it's good there's, so there's ways of doing Robin I always thought that would be a good idea for them to do a film Batman yeah. versus Robin yeah. sort of thing make well, him a bit more badass there is a there is an animated Batman versus Robin where he's um, uh, it's, it's a new Robin that is Batman's son and to give you a level of the adult nature of it this son came about because um a, a woman who was a, a major villain wanted Batman's seed, so um, she date-raped him. <laughs> and then whilst he's under the influence, she basically fucks him and takes his seed. <laughs> and then she's got what turns out to be this this kid called Damien Wayne. And then Damien. Uh, Damien Wayne, yeah. <laughs> the name says it all, really. You know, you know Liam Neeson's character in uh, Batman Begins, Rachel Ghoul. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's 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 his his daughter rapes Batman to get the seed, <laughs> and then they can raise Damien Wayne in the League of uh, the League of Shadows. And then when that all collapses, he has to be sent back to to Batman. And then Batman's like. Well, I guess I've got this fucking kid I've got to raise who's also a, a psychopath. Slightly different from the Adam West Batman. Yeah, too. slightly different. Just slightly. But it's 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 quite a good film. It's it's obviously this 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 eleven year old kid who is a flat out psychopath and thinks justice is murdering the criminals. And right. Batman's like, Well, that's not how we do things, lad. <laughs> and he's constantly having to rein back this psychotic child. Right. Um and it's it's good. It's not played for laughs or anything. It's yeah. I, I like I, said, I was genuinely shocked when it was like this kid has come about because Batman was date raped. Mm. So <laughs> surprising. But th- then there was a difference going back to the film formats. A huge difference, obviously VHS to DVD, and then mm. there was a big difference to 4K. I thought, especially like you say in the sound, 4K like and then the HDR was the next, the, the sort of cherry on the cake atop of that, which is yeah, and what it's, everything it seems to be now. Well, it's one of those things as well with especially with technology at the cinema, how we've had to keep up. And, mm. and before we were even digital, we had to show 3D because I was just going to mention that. Yeah. That's kind of gone. It, it uh, is, yeah. Gimmick. Because yeah. people were doing 3D films just for the sake of it, just because yeah. that was the latest thing. It doesn't work with every film. Some films well, don't need it. That we, was, screen 1 was 3D for the longest time. That's, that's the biggest screen. Mm. And then, you, did you have to do much to make it 3D? Uh, well, I mean... W- you get, we've got a polarizer that yeah. sits in front of the projector. Right. Um, and that basically that... It, it, it's a moving disc that then so that adds the third dimension. Sort yeah, of thing. so it, it splits the image, or it takes the already split image and, and kind of puts it together. Yeah. And then obviously, when you've got the glasses, there's, there's a lot of elements to it. Um, Some films yeah, it that's... works amazingly. Not most many. Of the, most of them not. Yeah, Gravity was one where the three D oh, was worked. Yeah. And what was the what was the main one? The animated one. Avatar. Avatar, Avatar yeah. That yeah. was good at 3D. Avatar was the reason, basically, that, yeah. that cinemas changed or got digital technology. So that would be 2008, 2009 mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And um, we were obviously still 35 mil at that point. Yeah. So we had to get lenses that were like a technical lens that would do do the same kind of thing as 3D, but it wouldn't look anywhere near as good. But we had to get it because we right. wouldn't be allowed Avatar otherwise. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then there's been that progression where obviously we got the polarizer with the digital and then it's just been overused here. Yeah, I think you were going to say well, it, it was moved into our smaller screen because no one no one cares, but we have to show them. I, so remember, you, I remember you used to get the cinema, you used to get the option of 3D or the normal. Yeah. We'd all just got the normal because you'd, yeah. uh, you'd look at the trailer or you'd read about it and you go, that doesn't need 3D. Well, we, <laughs> we might have got a film where, let's say there's four shows in a day. One of those shows would be 3D and the numbers would speak for themselves yeah. because you'd have 2D shows would be getting 50, 60, 70 people, the 3D, 10. Yeah. Maybe less.